Winnipeg Jets breakout candidates. Who are they? Are they going to be potentially great ones? Are we looking at more modest impacts? Which players might thrive under new head coach Rick Bonus and his brand new assistant coaching staff? Last week, we took a look at some of the top candidates. Now it's time to take a look at some guys who might be longer bets, but maybe have a big bounce back season in them, or maybe for some of the guys who just need a little bit more ice time, this is the time for them to truly shine and show the Jets what they've been missing. All coming right up on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. You're locked on the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, friends, and welcome to tonight's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. As always, thank you so much for choosing to make Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform of choice, including Apple, Spotify, Google, Megaphone, Odyssey, and YouTube. Doing so is completely free of charge and ensures you never miss another episode. Tonight's episode, of course, is going to be a fun one. Obviously, we have uh, some top breakout candidates that we talked about last week for, you know, Jets hockey. And and really what we're hoping is a big 2022-23 season for some of these players who haven't always had uh, maybe a big chance to shine or just didn't get a call up under Paul Maurice because, you know, obviously Paul didn't really love playing lots of rookies. I thought it would be time to revisit some of these cases, though, because there are some players on this roster that I think are maybe riskier bets to have a big year. It's not because uh, they they all lack talent or something. Maybe some of these guys just, you know, for one reason or or another, might not actually get a central role. Maybe they have struggled to find ice time because they have some inconsistencies in their game. Or maybe, you know, it just might be that for some reason the Jets haven't always recognized what they've had in them. I think the the prime case that I'm thinking about uh, and the player that we'll start off with is Nikolai Ehlers. Now, Ehlers is is not really a guy who has to break out, right? He's in the league. He's an established player. And let's be real. We all know that he is, uh, in many cases, Winnipeg's best overall skater. Other than Connor Hellebuck, I think Ehlers, for me, is maybe my number two most important player for this team, in part because, of course, he's a transition expert. He's a phenomenal creator. And recently, you know, ever since he started uh, just kind of shooting the lights out, you've been seeing that really skilled um, elite finisher and and true goal scoring ability that we know he's always had. It's just for one reason or another, a couple of years ago, he used to be super unlucky. It was honestly kind of a meme how often he would hit the post, uh, have a miraculous robbery made against him, all sorts of stuff. And, and for many reasons, I think Ehlers probably felt like he deserved a little bit more in terms of the scoring. But One of the biggest issues is something that I haven't really mentioned with him. And if you're wondering what that issue is, I'll give you like two to three seconds to guess. Got the answer in your mind? Well, if you thought it was usage and ice time, correct. That has actually been Ehlers' number one enemy. You probably don't realize this, but over the past couple of years, and it wasn't until last season that this even changed, but for like the last three to four years, he's been averaging something around 16 minutes of ice time. If you think about that, that's basically second line minutes, which for a guy of Ehlers' talent is really unacceptable. I don't usually crap on the Jets too harshly for um, some specific deployment stuff like this. I mean, there are some things that I think that they've done, you know, pretty poorly over the years. But in terms of like the top six, you know, it's usually Shifley with Wheeler. That's a bad combo. But if there is one thing that I can really harshly criticize and something that I say uh, was just really one of the worst decisions the coaching staff ever really made with Winnipeg's top six. It was also not giving Nikolai Ehlers top line minutes. This guy is dominant. And when he's at his best, he can basically carve up just about any defender in the entire NHL. He's one of the most gifted creators in space. I think he is a phenomenal uh, shooter and passer. And it's obvious that he has vision for days. He just understands and explores space in a way that very few skaters are capable of. And for him to play like 16 minutes uh, a night, until last year when I think he got as high as like 18 on average, something like that. For me, that's just mind boggling. And look, I know that he might not seem like a power play specialist, but I'm telling you, 
this guy has the ability to pass in ways that really only Cole Perfetti probably could. I think that you have a guy who's a genius level forward and somebody who maybe doesn't quite have the same level of, of elite sense, you might say, that Perfetti does, but is is so good at everything else that it honestly doesn't even matter. And that's kind of why I feel like when you look at all of the factors and the fact that Bonus might actually recognize what he has in Ehlers and the team itself not really making a lot of improvements up front, if in fact the Jets give uh, Nikolai Ehlers a promotion to the top six, um, not not you know to the second line, but to like an elite first line role, right? We're talking like 20 minutes a night or more. I think you're going to see Ehlers hit numbers that we've only really dreamed of with him. You know, 80, 90 points, I think is very reasonable for a player of his caliber. Put him in prime positions to really show off what he can do. Put him on the first power play unit. Give him that first line deployment alongside Shifley. Show that he is truly one of the best players on this team and he'll reward you. We've already seen that his scoring touch has really improved over the past couple of years we know that, you know, uh, he is an assist magnet when he's on his game. We know that he just actively makes everyone on his line better. And if Shifley kind of needed a kick in the butt, this is the guy who can bring it. Obviously, with Wheeler, Shifley just really doesn't have uh, the same ability to create as he does with other players. Not because Wheeler can't pass or anything. It's just, you know, Blake is a little bit on the slower side at his age. And when you're running him out 20 plus minutes a night, obviously Shifley has to kind of hang back a little bit and be prepared to offer more support when, you know, Wheeler is maybe maybe struggling to keep up a bit. So I think in this case, if you give somebody like Ehlers uh, a partner in Shifley, I think you're just going to see magic. Anytime that they've played together, it's always had really good results. And I think because Ehlers is so good at just dominating control in the offensive zone, you might also be able to mask any of Shifley's defensive issues. Not all of them, because it's not like both of these guys are elite in their own zone. But I think in, in general... What you want to see is defensive impacts through just elite offensive possession and domination at the other end of the ice. If you keep away uh, the puck from your own net, you won't even have to worry about defending in your own zone. And I think that that is really the the philosophy that the Jets should go for. And I think with the right players and upgrades, I think they can actually achieve this. It's what the 2017-2018 team was really good at on top of having an elite defense. But, you know, they just had so many waves of pressure at the other end of the ice that quite frankly, people couldn't really keep up. And I think the Jets uh, just really stifled opponents and, and wore them down. So I think Ehlers is really primed for a special next season. But the reason I've classed him as a little bit riskier is it's going to have to be dependent on whether Bonus and the coaching staff recognize that he's been playing far too few minutes. If he gets like a four to five minute jump in his ice time, I think his point totals are just going to you know shoot through the roof. I think that that little bit of his game that's just missing is going to finally be complete, and we're going to see a big year from him. But, of course, Ehlers isn't the only one who has had usage issues, and maybe there are some guys who are due for a really big NHL debut and a coming out party for some players who maybe just haven't quite gotten the call up yet. We'll take a look at which of these guys might be uh, due for a big season, even if they are still uh, relatively new to the league. And we'll also take a look at maybe one player, one goalie in particular, who might honestly be a real savvy pickup if he can recover his form and return to what he used to be with uh, one of our uh, other great Western Conference rivals. But before we go any further, I don't want to shout out one of our friends at betonline.net. Those of you who have followed this podcast before know that I personally don't do a lot of online betting myself, but when I used BetOnline, I thought it was amazingly simple. They explain all of the uh, the betting lines, odds, Whatever it is that you're into, they help explain all of the statistical categories. They make online betting very easy and approachable for just about anyone. And I say this as somebody who's a complete newbie. I thought it really couldn't be easier, and I cast a bet on a Bundesliga match that I actually won, which is pretty darn cool in my opinion. But Bet Online isn't just about betting, right? They want to be your premier source for everything sports, whether it's league updates, news, podcasts, uh, all this sort of sports content that you love to read and hear. They offer it on their website, and they want to be your top resource for everything around your favorite sports, whether you're into golf, Major League Baseball, NHL hockey, NBA basketball, NFL football, and everything in between. They've even got stuff for golf, esports, combat sports, triple crown horse racing, whatever sport you're into, they've got you covered. And if you're, no, if you're not really into sports, no problem. They've also got Vegas casino games for you lined up. So really, there's something for everyone. Getting started really couldn't be easier. Just head on over to betonline.net today and, uh, and uh, register for a free account on your laptop or mobile device because BetOnline is where the game starts. 
Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets. We are uh, continuing our thoughts on some guys who are maybe riskier bets to be, you know, breakout candidates for the Jets next year, but players that I, I do have some belief in as being really big opportunities for the Jets to find some true value inside the organization. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to say thanks again for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. Kind of circling back to Winnipeg's roster, obviously we have some interesting prospects and players who quite frankly, haven't always gotten a chance to shine. And I think one of the biggest ones that I'm looking at is Vili Heinola. Now, Heinola, for whatever reason, just hasn't really been able to break into Winnipeg's lineup, and I don't know why that is. I, I think, in my opinion, Heinola is maybe one of our most underappreciated prospects because, look, he's a small kid. I think a lot of people have always viewed him as a very soft player. Uh, he doesn't really play like the really hard scrabble physical game of somebody like Logan Stanley. But I think in, in Heinola's case, that's actually a huge advantage. Vili is really decide, you know, really designed to be the elite puck mover and space creator on the back end, but he's also a phenomenal passer. And I think that that is very clear when you've watched his old tape and even some of the tape with the Jets. When he gets a pass reception inside his defensive zone, he immediately looks up the ice and identifies a perfect either long pass or it may be a short to medium pass that helps bring a breakout. I think his ability to be a basically a mobile bumper on the back end, even inside the defensive zone, makes him a very unique asset. The Jets don't have many players like this. I, I guess the closest you might say is, um, honestly, I don't even know if we like have players like that. I, I guess you could say Josh Morrissey, but I think Heinle even then has some certain abilities that are uh, above what um, Josh can kind of do. And not because Morrissey is lacking in talent, I think it's more like Heinle just specializes in certain areas that Morrissey might not really touch. I think Josh is the more well-rounded defender, and it's obvious that he can be a really great player when you give him um, somebody who's like a more mobile puck-moving guy. You know, Morrissey, maybe with Heinle, would be a potentially disgustingly good pairing. But Heinle, you know, has never really gotten the, the trust and faith of the coaching staff. This year might be different, though, because bonus when uh, Miro Heiskanen showed up to Dallas he immediately made him one of the top players on the team and really trusted him to be their elite number one franchise defender. I think even more so than Klingberg, he basically put all of his faith in, in Heiskanen and Miro was just allowed to flourish. Obviously Heiskanen at one point was in the running for the Calder and has just been a tremendous player and skater. And also he's finished, right? That's got to bode really well for Heinola, who actually I think outperformed Heiskanen's um, comparable scoring rates maybe at like the the 17 year age mark something like that in liga so if you know i, I don't know if if Heinola's ceiling is is as high as it used to be obviously like the the trajectory of developing prospects it's not linear right it doesn't move always in a straight line but at this stage you know Heinola's had a couple of years where he hasn't really been able to break into the nhl so you know the longer he atrophies and sits in the minor leagues this is just really damaging to his experience level and to getting him acclimated to this level of hockey, which is kind of why I feel like this is his big chance to really break out. And it's kind of why, in some ways, I've maybe been a little bit more optimistic about Bones than I expected. I think Rick trusts the rookies more than any other coach we've had so far. And I think if 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 Winnipeg can just kind of convince him to really stick with it and show some of these kids what it's like to make the NHL and let them flourish and do what they're they're really best at, I think the Jets might be able to mask some of the, the roster deficiencies. Not all of them. I would still really prefer it if Winnipeg brought in guys like Puya Yarvi, uh, Sonny Milano, and a few others. But I think for me, you know, Heinle remains one of the most interesting and risky breakout candidate options. I think it's risky because there's a chance that maybe Bones doesn't really love him. Maybe his reputation has soured to the point where uh, the Jets just don't really want to give him that big of a chance. But I think for me, personally, I think that Heinola maybe has the highest ceiling of any of these breakout candidates that's not already like an established NHLer. You know, I, I think Perfetti obviously is, you know, above that, uh, you know, Cole is a special unicorn, right? Um, and of course, guys like Ehlers are, are likely going to just blow blow the, the, the lights out, I guess, of uh, Canada Life Center. But 
All that said, I still think Heinola has the potential to be like a tremendous puck mover and maybe one of our most active defenders, somebody that I think could really boost the power play and just be a phenomenal two-way force, uh, even if his defensive impacts are more from just retaining puck possession and not so much because he's an elite defender. I I don't think he really does that stuff all that well, to be honest. But in terms of his offensive skills and everything else, he is A-plus material, and I think he could be uh, a true power play quarterback. But there is one other player that I think in terms of like skaters, I'm interested to see this year. Now he's not a defender. He is a forward. And I think we've seen flashes with him. It's Christian Reichel. Now I, I think he's probably one of the other candidates that I would say is a very risky breakout candidate, because to be honest, I don't even know if he's going to be up with the big club, but in previous flashes with him, with the jets, we've seen a guy who has a lot of skill for like a middle six forward. I think Christian can be a true creator. Uh, His game is not like overly complicated, I wouldn't say. It's not like he brings this ridiculous technique, but what you get with him is a very clean skater, a clean passer, clean shooter, a smart player, somebody who's always in the right position, and somebody who can actually be a decent play driver out wide. I I don't think you're going to get like crazy, crazy performances from him, but I think Christian has shown enough to be considered a very good candidate for like a bottom six role. And honestly, if you're looking for a breakout sleeper, maybe for uh, a really cheap option on like a keeper league in fantasy or something, Reichel might not be the worst idea to cast like a dollar out in in, uh, some free agent budget on. I don't think he's going to be like a 30 or 40 point producer, but you know, if he hits like 20, 25 points and honestly does so while driving play, or at least being break even in terms of shot impacts, I think that's about as good as anyone could ask for. And I think the Jets would be thrilled with it. I think it would be an amazing uh, turnout for a guy that they basically just got for free. And honestly, from, you know, from like a personal perspective, I'm always rooting for Christian. He seems like a really nice kid. I think last year was, of course, his NHL debut goal. And, you know, his whole family was thrilled. We were all like amazed that it actually went in. But yeah, I mean, what a great moment for him. And if he can make the club out of camp this year, Sky's the limit. I hope that he really shows off what he can do and maybe even earn a look at some point in the top six where where Andrew Kopp used to play. But uh, there is one other player that I want to talk about tonight that, yeah, he's a very risky bounce back candidate and somebody that I would personally not be expecting a lot from. But we'll talk about this player and why he might actually refine his form with the Jets in just a little bit. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On Jets. We are closing out tonight with some uh, final thoughts on one last potential uh, breakout candidate, a guy who's a a bit of a risk to really talk about with the context of breakout candidates even. I wouldn't say that this is a guy that I'm expecting a lot from, but it would be awesome if he actually turns out to be a really good player for the Jets. This guy, of course, is David Riddick. And I know that I wasn't really fond of the signing I mentioned before that uh, I definitely preferred Eric Comrie, although Comrie would have been a little bit more expensive by probably another million or so. Uh, but Big Save Dave, a couple of years ago, he had this really great run of form with the Calgary Flames, where he was this big body, very square to shooters. Um, his reflexive saves were pretty decent. I, I did think that at times, maybe his crease depth and positioning wasn't ideal, but Riddick, of course, has sort of fallen off. I think the past season with the Preds and really the past couple of years in general, we've just seen a decline in his ability to track shots and stuff. The reason that I've put him on this potential breakout candidate list is because Eric Comrie was also really bad at one point. Like, make no mistake, when the Jets were waving him and stuff, it wasn't really surprising. Comrie just didn't really seem to have the fundamentals to be a true NHL goalie. There was talent there. You saw potential in a long-term project sort of way, but it just never really coalesced into something to where you felt comfortable making him the backup. And then last year, all of a sudden, it seemed like there was some kind of a magic breakthrough. Riddick doesn't really have to have that happen. I just think he has to work on some of his mechanics and fundamentals. Uh, With, you know, Rick Bonus liking a really defensive style of hockey at times, pending the state of the game, it might actually benefit David to kind of rework um, and, and sort of figure out what his mechanical flaws are. Maybe go back to dr- to the drawing board. We've seen some of those goalies and backups come to Winnipeg and really shine. You know, Laurent Brassois fixed his game a bit. Um, of course, Eric Comrie fixed his game. Maybe the Jets actually have some goalie whispers. I was never a fan of Wade Flaherty in the past. Maybe he has somebody or maybe he himself 
has really unlocked this secret to actually being pretty pretty decent with goalie development. I can't say for sure. I don't know what the situation is. Uh, obviously, Connor Hellebuck is, of course, our Vesna winner and truly an amazing goalie that we've uh, been blessed to watch for so many years. But maybe Riddick is primed for a breakout can, uh, campaign himself. Maybe this is his time to shine. And honestly, give Hellebuck more of a rest. Uh, you know, our, our backups previously just have never given Hellebuck more than 20 games because, like, the Jets, for some reason, just don't really play them that often. I'm being a bit um, facetious here. Obviously, they have played more than 20 games at a time, but basically it might as well be a very small amount, right? Just around that because uh, Hellebuck is eating so many minutes and taking so many shots. So it'd be nice if Riddick has a big year and can honestly rest Helly a little bit more. I think it would do wonders if Hellebuck is able to maintain his form down the stretch and into the playoffs, uh, assuming that the Jets even make it. But, you know, I'm not going to be upset if Riddick doesn't really pan out. I just hope that he does. He's a super nice guy. He's got a great personality. And I think, uh, you know, again, on a personal level, on a personal level, it would be awesome to see him shine for the Jets and kind of get back to where he used to be a couple of years ago. But I'd be curious to know what breakout candidates you're hoping for. Maybe you think that there's a player there that we have haven't talked about that's just waiting for the chance to shine. Or maybe there's a guy out there who you think might finally show that he really is good and, and, kind of return to form. Maybe it's Neil Pionk. Maybe it's uh, Adam Lowry who showed off some really good stuff for Team Canada. Well, you know, whoever you're thinking, be sure to let me know at HL Living Local and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets or in the comments below, give me your top breakout candidates for the upcoming season. For tonight's episode, that is going to be all the time that we have. I thank you so much for making Locked on Jets your first listen of the day every day. While you're here, I would actually ask you to make your second listen Locked on NHL. Our Locked on experts give you a daily 30-minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. Stay up to date on everything in the world of hockey with Locked on NHL. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform of choice. And as always, thank you so much for listening. Have a great night, and go Jets go!